Hi guys, it's me again. So back to Apache Guacamole. Now, what we've seen in the previous videos that Apache Guacamole, we have configured um, user dash um, XML, uh, which is user mapping file, where all the authentication and connection settings are deduced from that file. Uh, what we'd like to show you in this simple video is how to authenticate users based, based on other methods. So the other methods, for example, can be LDAP, can be RADIUS, can be single sign-on. In this very simple and very specific case, we are going to show you how to use a database authentication. And the specific database type I will be using is MySQL database. So basically, the user is going to take the, um, uh, the request, the Guacamole server will take the request from the user and will pass uh, and we'll pass these details to um, a SQL database backend. Now, in, uh, because this is um, a demo and uh, just showing you how to build it, the SQL database will be uh, running on the same Guacamole server, and we're going to show you the difference between uh, these two types of authentication. So let's make a start. So the first step you are going to do, as always, you have to make sure that you are up to date. Uh, we issue the command so do opt update. And in our case, you will find that they are all updated. Now I would like to show you an example of what we're trying to achieve here. So this is just an example of something that has already been built. We looked in, we can see a list of um, uh, resources. Now, if we go to instructor setup, like in this case, the user who looked in, you will see the users, groups, connections. So this is the screen where you do um, administration for the uh, guacamole. Now, the first thing we're going to do, or the second thing we're going to do is install MySQL server as well as MySQL client. So in this first step, you might find MySQL server has already been installed. Now we're gonna do uh, the installation for the MySQL um, client in this case. So once you install MySQL client and everything is being installed for you, we're gonna create a database. Um, so we will move to the MySQL prompt. So now we are within the MySQL prompt and we're gonna show the databases that already uh, came, if you like, with MySQL, I'm not MySQL, I'm not a database expert, but at least we need to know that some basics here. So we're gonna create a new database and that database will form the basis of all the information. So we're gonna create a database. And in this example, we will give it um, a name with guacamole underscore DB. Obviously you can create your own database, different name, but we assume that all instructions in this uh, are based on the guacamole uh, database. Um, simply speaking, once we've done that, uh, we would like to create a user and that user will be internal user. So this is the user that will be used by the SQL and then we grant, grant that user all the rights to be able to update, delete, insert, um, and then we will flush privileges and uh, basically to update the privileges that have been updated or assigned to that specific um, user. So once we've done that, um, now we need to download the Apache Guacamole um, authentication engine, if you like, because that's different than the actual Guacamole file. It is seen as extension. I did download this one. I'm using file Zella to download uh, and copy the, the file into our Guacamole server. Uh, any file transfer, but this is the most commonly used file transfer uh, tool. Um, so this is the file now has been copied into our guacamole. Once we've done that, uh, we are just checking where we are. Um, and we can see clearly that the file has been updated or uploaded into our guacamole server. We will tar the file, i.e. we will um, unzip the file into our guacamole server. Now, once the file has been unzipped, there will be multiple files created. One of them is a jar file, which is a guacamole auth. Uh, JDBC MySQL, which is the one that we are interested in. Now, this file has to be copied and placed into the extensions folder underneath which uh, the file will be always referred to when the authentication happens. So 
in this case, we are we are just verifying uh, the list of devices, uh, the list of files and uh, folders here. And in there, they will find a schema has been built in. Now we're going to use this one in the future to build our tables. Um, so now what we're doing here, we're copying the .jar file from the folder where it is sitting into our etc. guacamole uh, extensions location. So once we've done that, uh, we now copy the 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 um, the file into the extension or the into the extensions folder. Now we would like to list and show you that the jar file is being copied into that location. Very simple. Now we focus our attention. We will download the database connectivity or connector. Um, this is the site that I have downloaded into. Um, once we've done that, we need to copy that file as well into the, the library folder within the Guacamole um, folder as well. So here, example, we can see that we gonna. Uh, this is the, what we done. We tar the file, so extend it, um, unzip it, copy that file now, the jar file into the library folder. Once we've done that, so we have all the files ready. Uh, we have everything is ready now, after, after which we need to make sure that we restart the Tomcat service as well as the uh, Guacamole daemon service. Um, so this is being copied now, right now, as you can see clearly, and we can see the list of files in the library folder inside the Guacamole folder. Very clear, very straightforward, very simple. Now what we need to do is to... Uh, create our schema. So we created the schema. This has created all the necessary tables that enables Guacamole uh, to use the um, SQL Server. So the tables like, for example, user table, um, connector tables, group tables, multiple tables that you will have created by uh, executing that command. Now we need to update the property file. So here we can clearly see that we have added a new extension, which is uh, MySQL extension, if you like, for uh, the authentication. Once we have updated the guacamole.properties file, we would like to link. So we're gonna link that one to the Tomcat 9, which is uh, the engine, basically. And then, so we create a, server, um, a symbolic link. We restarted the Tomcat 9 service and we restarted the Guacamole Demon um, service in this case. Now let's have a look. Um, we try to log in. Uh, by default, a Guacamole admin or Guac admin, username, password, the Guac admin is the default username, password. We will disable that account. You cannot make changes, but that shows you this is the default login name for the Guacamole, once you have um, configured uh, the database authentication uh, process. Now, what we're going to do, we can see that clearly there are, you know, um, only one user. So we can create a new user now. We're going to create a user, and we would like to give that user name, my name, uh, Nafit Salama, or whatever password. And we will um, allow that user to have the admin privilege, if you like. So we give them permission uh, on everything. We save it, and we're going to log out from this Guac admin and log in as the name that we have created right now, Nafit Salama. And once we do this, we would like to disable the Guac admin user as best practice because it's a well-known user and um, is a well-known, of course, uh, privileges. So now... Uh, we disabled that. Once we've done that, basically, uh, we will log out and try to log in as a Guac admin to make sure that the Guac admin user has been disabled. So now we should fail to log in. Perfect. So we will go back and log in with uh, my name, which is the name we created. Now this name is now going to be used or the demo. So we're going to go and create users and all that stuff. Right, so this is an example of things I have created. I'll show you how, just um, one example, for example. Right, so we go to the connectors. Uh, you can create 
So these are the things that I have created. We're going to show you also an example how to create such um, a connection, um, connection, connection groups and so on. So that's an example here. We created a connection group called test. Um, and then click on that one, create a new connection, which is, so the connection, simply speaking, is the resource you're going to access. For example, uh, as an SSH, VNC, or remote desktop, or whatever. So we create a new connection under the connection group. All of these are detailed in the manual. Uh, obviously, you can always uh, consult uh, Guacamole manual, uh, which I will uh, show you a link at the end of this video. Now, this is an example of um, a file, um, a connection to RDP, which is Windows Base, and we provide details of that. Obviously, a lot of details you can allow multiple logins, you can restrict logins and multiple different things, but we'll show you the basics here. So we live in as a test user. In this case, we're going to find that this test user has connection we have created for that test user. You can clearly see, very simply speaking, you are able to log in remotely to that Windows machine without any, uh, any trouble. Um, if you open another connection here, you'll find a link at the bottom of the screen. So you can flip between one screen to another screen. Maybe a better option, if you would like, is to go and open each one of these resources in, in, in its own tab. Um, so you can have all the tabs open at one time, and you can always refer to them and get access to these uh, different resources. I think uh, this is what I want to show you and the difference between having an XML authentication, which is user mapping file, which is default uh, behavior, and the SQL database in our case. Now, um, this is module or chapter eight, administration for Guacamole. You can always refer to that chapter for update. Thank you very much for listening to me. And that was my great, uh, it was a great to host you into this uh, very nice and simple video. Thank you very much and um, speak to you in future videos.